Um, I live in East Texas and I have been an educator. Uh, I was a classroom teacher. I was a integration specialist with technology and other school districts. And really that's when my passion for immersive technology began. So as I started learning a little bit more about augmented reality, of course, virtual reality was not too far after that. And that's when I ran into CoSpaces uh, in the process. So it was a really cool journey and I feel like the journey is still going strong. Well, I believe my first connection with CoSpaces was back in 2017. So I reached out to the, the company and said, this is amazing. They were really heavily focused on gamifying the tools. So kind of a game for anybody to use. And I was like, this could be something that would be amazing in a classroom. And at that time, you know, it really wasn't a classroom tool. So I started meeting up with Manuela and um, some of the other people on the team and collaborating about ways that this can really, you know, be leveraged in education. And of course, you know, at, at that time in education, it was really starting to take fire. So I think that, um, I think they've been on a really cool journey too. It's been interesting to see the progress that CoSpaces has made. Um, but my first encounter with them and sharing them was at an event that I hosted um, that was virtual and hosted it with a bunch of teachers and people all over the world were jumping into CoSpaces back then and joining me in the space. It was super cool. Yeah, I think when it comes to immersive technology and, you know, really any technology in education it has to be really seamless to implement. Um, if you are running into a bunch of barriers, I think that that's not going to be reasonable to ask teachers to do, nor is it really going to be feasible in the long run. Having books completed, I'm not, I, I don't typically like to write. It's a, really a struggle for me. So. Um, it was something, you know, from when I was a kid, just not really enjoying reading and it being something that was required and something I always figured out how to get around. Um, and I think that, you know, as an adult, writing was not my strength and still is not my strength. Although most of what I do in my career today is writing, interestingly enough. But I think um, what what is something that made me say this is what I need to do is that teachers were saying, yeah, I get what you're saying in the conferences. I'm excited with you. This sounds really cool. I'm ready to implement. But I'd see them year after year and they were like, I, I just didn't even know where to start. And so writing the books, I think, while, you know, really there's not a whole lot of monetary gain in writing these books, it's really not about financially making a bunch of money. It is something that I invested a lot of time and energy into so that people felt confident to jump into some of these tools. So, you know, explaining what they are, explaining how to implement, explaining what tools are out there to help them achieve their goals, explaining how to make this personalized for the students. So customizing these tools to the needs of your individuals. So all of those things in the process of writing, I think really helps somebody to say, okay, I don't understand to now, I understand what this is and I'm ready to move forward. And I've taken a bunch of notes and I, I'm processed, I had time to process all of this and here's the support to move forward. And I think that probably is one of my greatest achievements in education because um, while it's not my strength, I think it was necessary for people to move forward. I had did a training for some uh, students inside of Virginia at a charter school and they asked me to come in because they wanted to start implementing co-spaces. The teachers were not on board. So they were required to have their students come through and the teachers had to come through with them. And none of the teachers wanted to be there because you know they wanted their time to be able to plan and, and do whatever else. Um, but the teachers came in and the students had never been on CoSpaces before. So they all had iPads and all the students I started off with kind of an explanation as to what this is. They got to go in there and kind of play, like collaborate together, put them all into one space. And it was funny. They were figuring it out. And then we moved into the individual or small group projects. And that was directly tied to the curriculum, whatever the teacher had assigned for that class, what they needed to work on. So every single class had a different activity that they needed to accomplish. And I could tell you one thing that those teachers started off with so much resistance, 
by the end, when we all came together after school, um, the teachers were 100% sold. They were like, wow, my students love this. It wasn't because they necessarily were wanting to jump into co spaces, but because they saw the enthusiasm of what their students were doing and the effect, how quickly they caught on, how much they were able to be successful in what they were doing in such a short one, a class period. And so they were sold at that point. And I honestly think that's probably the best approach is letting our students really demonstrate what they understand, how they want to share it, and let the teachers really see the effect of that and how much more powerful that is than requiring them to do it in a PowerPoint or requiring them to do it in a shoebox or whatever you might have them do giving them the flexibility of doing it in a platform that they prefer, I think you're just going to get so many more wins in that. Oh boy, this one's a tough one. I should have, I should have probably been prepared for that one. Um, I want to say that the group collaboration, of course, when that was, you know, brought together and you can have different groups brought in and, and you had small groups, you had, you know, large, the whole group that is being brought in. I love that feature because the flexibility of what is needed for each lesson. Um, I, you know, I've been a fan. I mean, I'm not at all skilled with code at all, but when it comes to code spaces, it's fun to learn. Um, so I really enjoy the fact that they brought in a tool, their tool, you know, it's kind of went through progression throughout the years, but their tool to be able to code and understand the basics of code just by play. And I think that you have a goal and you figure it out and you start kind of piecing things together and it's a little bit of trial and error. I think students learn well that way. Um, I love the animation. I always use animation on my on my objects. I think that that's important. They're, one of their newer tools was creating tours. So being able to bring virtual reality concepts through 360 spheres. I, I mean, I'm jumping all over the place, but there's so much. I don't know if I could choose one tool or one feature that um, CoSpaces has made available that I could say that's it. I think all of them have been really cool and um, I've shared them all. I don't use maybe the complex aspect of it because a lot of the times what I'm showing is an early introduction to CoSpaces for most participants, but I may hone in on one aspect of using CoSpaces for something. And oftentimes it's it's a need, right? Somebody's saying, I have these 360 images, what can I do with them? Well, let me show you. Or I scanned this 3D object where do I put it now? Oh, let's bring it into CoSpaces. So there's aspects of like using what skills that they're working on, what tools that they have, what their outcomes need to be, what kind of devices that they're restricted to. All of those factors come into play. And 99% of the time, CoSpaces is on my top list because it is so flexible for so many different situations. Ah. Let the students run the show. I, I really think that when you empower the kids to demonstrate what they can do in co-spaces, instead of restricting them in any technology, right? Um, co-spaces is great because students take off, you know, to them, it's like the education roadblocks. Um, so they go home, they go home and use it. They are doing it in the evenings, outside of school time. So I think really empowering our students to demonstrate what they can do instead of restraining them to what we want them to, what what we want it to look like and feel like and, and the, out, the specific outcomes. I think having an idea of what you of course want them to achieve in the process, what are your objectives, what are your goals, but letting them demonstrate that in Coast Basis is pretty wild. I think you leaving that door open. Plus, you don't need to know everything in every tool. And that is difficult, I know, for education. Like, I understand that feeling of like, I, I don't know how to answer that question. But letting them be the ones that actually share with other students before it ever comes to you is really powerful. And it lets them feel that confidence of understanding something sometimes better than other people. Some I worked with students that um, were really either struggling or had failed standardized tests in years past. And so those students did not feel very successful. They did not feel 
confident in their math skills. But when they were given access to technology and that was their thing, boy, they really shined. And then when you can group up what they really love with something that they might struggle with, it builds that confidence to try new things. So I think empowering our students to be able to take the lead in these technologies is very important because this is definitely their future and where they're going with tech. I would say take it one step at a time. They don't need to do everything in co-spaces, um, but let your students have the opportunity to learn from each other. Whenever I bring any teacher in, they're usually my students, so this is how I train people on using co-spaces, is I bring them in and I have them join into one big space. All of the students, teachers in my class, are then all pushed into one space and they're having to see what other people can do. And when they see other people do it, then they're saying, wow, how is that possible? What do I do? I show them the very, very basic. I show them how to make something larger or smaller because that doesn't come as easy for people to figure out. I show how to rotate. I show how to add animation. Um, I show how to play and be able to show what you're editing versus what is the final output? What does this actually look like? Um, I show some basic code of pulling something in and drag and drop. Um, so I really just kind of touch on those things and let them run wild with everything else because there are so many features, but really at the basic for a teacher getting started, just showing them the very basic, what they can do with their students, give their students a chance to play first and then move into content next is going to be an important aspect to have success with those bases. So, um, those are, you know, you don't need to know everything, but uh, I'll tell you right now, it'll be fun to learn it along the way. You know, I am passionate about doing things a little bit different, thinking outside the box, um, understanding who our individual students are and working with them on what they are passionate about. Um, I'm really excited to see immersive technology used in a way you know, through things that we have already available to us, like our mobile devices, um, like our Chromebooks, or like our computers, or like our glasses, um, using these kinds of technologies in ways that are seamless in our normal everyday life, I think it's going to be really cool to watch as this unfolds. Um, and I'm really just excited to see students loving learning. You know, being able to take this and say, this is something that I really enjoy. I really am excited to see, especially with CoSpaces and other tools, how we continue to make a tool that students just go back and play. They go back consistently to, and when they don't have access to it, they demand it, right? Like that is a great sign for where we're moving in education. I would say that you know, really asking them how this has impacted a student. So has CoSpace has made an impact on that one individual or group of individuals? What has changed by implementing this kind of tool into the classroom? I would love to hear that story because I think that's where the students really get to shine. And that's where the meaning behind any of these technologies really come back. It's the stories behind the tools.